Alright, today I'd like to talk about this Canon Vixia HF G50. Uh, this is my new camera. It records in 4K video, does 1080p, but I guess the big thing is it's for a 4K video. So I've been using this camera for a little bit over a month now. I've done some video editing with it, you know, recorded the footage 4K, ed uh, did some video editing with it, messed around with it and uh, just like to go over the settings of this camera. This is basically gonna be my my camera for the next couple, several years here for doing video on my, uh, for my videos and for just home, for home video use as well. A lot more superior than my old camera that I've been using, so it's definitely a move up. Definitely brings a lot of my video work into the 4K world. Is 4K necessary in a world? Because we need to shoot video in 4K because people are watching their video on one of these and they have to have, they'll only watch videos that are shot in 4K when they search on YouTube on this, on a screen about this size. So you need to shoot your videos in 4K, yeah, I know. Crazy. It's something that I'm kind of a little bit later getting into the 4K scene, but this camera here has been something I've been meaning to get for years now. Finally got the, the time, the money together to to buy this camera. I bought it here in Canada. So Canadian, it was about close to $1,500 for the camera, after, you know, taxes and all that. Uh, I was looking at one of the more professional cameras that do a lot higher bit rate, but really I was it, I was looking at spending an extra thousand dollars at 60 frames per second and things like that. Not really something I'm overly concerned about for the videos that I'm making. Mainly I'm just trying to keep things as simple as possible. All right, we're gonna do the unboxing of the Canon the uh, HF G50. Well, it's got its documentation, warranty, and the manual. The camera, uh, power charger, power supply. Um, there, uh, probably a battery and some holders. I'll look and see what that is. <clears throat> the uh, lens cap, and also it's like a <clears throat> kind of a sun visor. <clears throat> and the main event is the camera here. There's the there's the camera here, nice uh, you know the old school uh, kind flip out screen. Tear that off here. Um, I don't have the battery in. Two SD card slots, uh, lens cap too, which is kind of nice. Uh, my other camera does not have that. It has like a this camera here I'm using has one of those switches, and the switch got jammed up. So I like this that it uh, doesn't do that. Yeah, so that's the old school uh, zoom in and out. Which I, I, I like that, that's a throttle zoom. And a lot of features. The microphones are right there, and the speakers will be in there as well. You should be, oh, here they are. Uh, so here you got your um, mini uh, D, uh, HDMI out, not included. Your mic input, I don't know if this comes off. Uh, there's a remote you can get for this, for uh, a wired remote. Uh, your microphone and your headphones, and there's a USB. And uh, has your standard tripod uh, mount hole, so if you have a standard tripod. There's one thing I've noticed a lot of reviewers, they didn't even show the bottom of this, and you can see this in the different uh, places online for this, because uh, it's an important thing to be able to put on a, a, U, uh, a U mount or whatever you're, you're putting it on. This is the power cord for the, uh, for the charger. Charger is here. It actually has a nicer charger than the other Canon camera that I had, where it just basically has like a, um, um, a little, uh, looks like a cell phone charger thing. And there's this thing here. So if you want to secure this onto your camera, and it has a little flip right there. So if you want to secure that to the camera, and you want to not use this and use this. Leave this goes on, it'll screw it on. There it goes. And then, as you want to use it, it just flips open. You see the camera flip it off when you're not using it, keeps the dust off the lens. Makes this thing look a lot like it looks like you're a news news uh, broadcaster when you have this thing. Here's the battery, an airtight bag, and just 
should just snap there. Now my other mm -hmm. camcorder, I haven't never even changed the battery. I just charge it, and I only have one battery. So there you go. It's just there. If you want it off, you change it there. If you do have multiple batteries, I actually own like on my current camcorder. I've only had one battery, and that's been good enough for me. I'm gonna charge it up because I think it's dead. And uh, the uh, DC, the charge port is right there. So the first thing is actually to set up is to set the date and time. So we'll do that now. All right. So one thing Ken has decided to do is include this ferrite core, uh, which you install in your uh, on your wire for charging it. Uh, I don't know why they give you it as optional. Uh, ferrite cores typically are on power supplies. Uh, you may have some around your house. This is like one example where there's a power supply and it has the ferrite core built into it. Uh, this is the first time I've seen where you actually get a product and you install it yourself. Maybe I've seen this before and just never knew what it was because I never read the manual. So it says to have it about a couple inches off of it and clamp it. So I'm just, I've never done this before so bear with me. Um, I think you got to wrap around twice something to that extent and then close it off I don't know if this will work or I'll just have to do it once let's take a look here it says in the manual it kind of shows like in the diagram that it's doing this twice for the ferrite core I'm not sure <laughs> not doing a very nice job of it anyway I got it on there all right so I installed the ferrite core I just sort of snapped it in there great idea actually you know what? I just looked up on this I didn't know anything about ferrite cores it's kind of cool. Uh, I have uh, microphones at my church that make a lot of hissing noise. Maybe I should get a few of these and put it on each end. There we go. So yeah, uh, after spending uh, $1, over $1,400, Canon's decided, hey, I can also make you install your own ferrite core. All right, so I just put it on here, on this tripod here. And um, I got it on a U bracket. You can get these U brackets on eBay maybe $10, $20 if you get it from the right spot. So this one actually has, so you mount it to the camera and then also I have the tripod mount, so it mounts to the tripod so I can pop it off the tripod and still have the U-bracket uh, on the camera. This is really handy for uh, my home videos just to be able to get the camera at eye level with, uh, with my kids, my dog, and just to be able to uh, do home videos with. Not necessarily for uh, my uh, uh, video uh, work for reviewing stuff but it is kind of a really nice thing to have uh, for the camera uh, so turn it on you got the switch here at the top you got the uh, camera and media media is to watch your videos back or you slide over to camera uh, you might want to pop the screen open there you'll hear that sound and it'll come on now it's gonna be a bit of black screen because the the camera there you go, pop that lens cap up. I do like that it has the lens cap built into it, just to keep the dustiness <laughs> off. So here's the display. It's actually very similar. The whole interface is actually very similar to my current camera. Another thing I've noticed is the SD cards. Now, <laughs> I went ahead and put the cheapest SD cards I could find, like a, uh, 128 gigabytes. I have two 128 gigabyte cards. All right, so the ports here, there is a microphone and a headphone and there's a USB, uh, that kind of USB. Uh, there is a micro HDMI out. And there's a little, you can get a remote for these things, which are a wired remote uh, for controlling the zoom. And I think you can you know, hook it up to your tripod. And One thing I've had, maybe the cable is not a good cable, but I tried to transfer the, the pictures directly off this camera and it was a ridiculously slow could be the cable that I happen to use. I ended up just popping the SD cards out, putting it into the an adapter that I have to USB 3, and I transferred it that way. So to put a tripod head on it on this camera, let's just close the lens cap here. There we go. So I just got the bottom here has this tripod cap on. So to get actually get it off the uh, the U bracket, I just need to twist this guy off here, and then I just twist this off here, and it will just take. Uh, the camera will come off of the U bracket. There we go. Uh, here's the bottom of it. You can see where the battery release is and all that. The uh, custom button. Just put on a regular tripod mount, which I'm going to do with this here. Make sure it's got the right way. 
And that's what I do like about this. It's not like a crazy professional tripod where you have to go find like some really expensive proprietary connection. It just uses pretty much the standard tripod connection. It's an important thing. I, I mean, you're gonna buy, the buy a camera, you wanna be able to put it on your tripod, right? To get the viewfinder to work, you have to kind of slide it out and do that with the viewfinder. If you wanna view video through there, I don't think you're gonna see anything through this camera here. Uh, with the viewfinder, I guess you can see a screen in there. And it is color, and you see basically everything you'll see on the uh, on this screen here if you pop this thing out. Which I actually prefer this, uh, to actually see the screen. So there's the SD cards in there. Uh, I got two. And I'm actually using a uh, cell phone uh, SD cards, like 128 uh, Kingston. They're class 10s, which I think they're all pretty much class 10s now. But it's actually been, as long as I had two in there, it seemed to work no problem. And I was able to re record on it. Fills up fast, 128 gigabytes will fill up fast if you're using 4K video because 4K is so, uh, uh, there's a lot of bit rates there. A connector right here, I don't know if I'll really be using that. I'm really just using this as a pretty much a take out of the bag and start shooting with type camera. All right, so I just want to go through some of the settings. There you go. So you go and you have, I don't know which way is the best. Oh yeah, there's a little controller. On the back here, that's kind of like a little joystick, and you can use this soft zoom control off zoom speed. I don't even care, you know what? They talk about all oh, this camera has such such zoom or whatever. I keep it zoomed out all all the way because like just makes your videos look shaky if you have your zoom if have it zoomed in all the time. So there's your resolution settings. This is a very important thing for this camera. So you'll have your your 4K video. And it's 150 megabytes per second. So that's a very taxing. And it really only gives you that one option. It is a very taxing on um, space. And when I upload to YouTube, it's nowhere near the size of this uh, file size or upload to any uh, streaming platform because it's such a huge format. Most of the time in your video editor even, you're gonna edit your video and it doesn't even have to be at this large. It just happens to be for your master footage. And even uh, the 1080p video setting, it's uh, at 35 megabytes per second, which is, for 1080p, that's very high. I've always used before, I use about, uh, on, on this camera here, I was using about 17 megabytes per second, which is actually better quality than I wouldn't even be uploading anywhere near that. So just uh, something to bear in mind. All right, so there's different frame rate options you can do in here. Now, for if you're doing 4K, it's not going to do... Um, 59.94 frames per second. It will do 29, you know, 30 frames per second, 29.97. Uh, if you're looking for that. Now, when I bought this camera, I knew I knew that buying into it, and I didn't want to spend an extra thousands of dollars, you know, basically to do 60 frames per second. I just need the 4K resolution for that YouTube video. People would see that it, my videos are shot in 4K, and it doesn't really show them recording media. So this is a nice thing to have on this menu. It will set whether you're going to record to your uh, your A SD card or your B SD card, and you could say like you could tell the camera to uh, record pictures to one uh, one uh, card and your video to another card. So it's a nice thing to have dual recording, standard recording, dual recording. Uh, dual recording is if you want to record to like two different uh, simultaneously. Oh, and standard recording is recording to one SD card. So you can go to your available space on memory. It'll tell you how much you have left on your card. And then your settings, if you want to go to your like uh, number two or three, I think I could touch that. Uh, my, my finger's too big for that. So I'm just gonna use the little joystick and go to menu two. You can initialize your SD card, which I don't want to delete the files on there. So I'm gonna make sure I'm not on that settings. Record command off, HDMI time code is off. Uh, time code mode is preset. Uh, time code running mode is re record run. DNNFD is DE, whatever that is. And then the other settings are initial time code, user bit type, color bars, one kilohertz tone, and MP4 clip photo numbering. I wonder if I can change this because I it's a little different than my other camera. Audio setup, a bunch of these things are grayed out here. Audio limiter, oops, one out of there. Back in there, get that two. Mic power is on, headphone volume is eight. So just uh, different sound settings you can do in this uh, in this camera. 
notification sounds. I have that on. I almost feel like I want to turn that off because I don't like the dee dee. And I'm actually going to high volume, low volume, just off. Off, okay. I don't know, I'm going to regret that because when I'm handing it to my kids and have them record something, <laughs> I won't know if they're recording. HDMI max resolution. I think that's for the output. If you want to output this, I don't care that it's outputting at 1080p. It's mainly just to record in that 4K. And you just have settings for your video, the video display output uh, with the wrench here. Now there's about four different screens here for all the menus, but I do like the fact that they don't bury them down low. You have to go down like way down on the screen here to uh, to find that. Makes it especially when you're out on a shoot and you're you're in a sunny day. So it just gives you all these options here for power LED, access LED. And you can assign the buttons too. There's a lot of buttons on this computer. You can assign certain buttons to different tasks in different modes. Canon S3 MB, whatever that is. Okay, there's the certification information. Sometimes to get out of these, it's just easy enough to tap on the X and get out of the menu and your camera. That's my look at this. I'm not, um, by, by no means am I an expert on cameras. I don't have a ton of different cameras to compare with. It's mainly just this one here that I have f uh, for uh, the display. You can hit the display button and take away all the settings. But I, when you're operating the camera, it's really nice to have like your sound here set to focus button and all that uh, stuff. So the only real, so the only output that it records is MP4 on this camera. So it, um, but I don't mind that myself because my video editor, video editors, most video editors I throw the files at, they work. It just seems to be enough of a standard. When digital camcorders first came out, there was like odd standards, and not all video editors would edit, especially with like my first Canon camcorder. Uh, it was kind of a w weird. Um, not every video editor could, could uh, view the video in it. So I'm glad that it's moved along and it's more of a standardized format like the MP4 format. Focus ring, direction normal. Oh yeah, I got the focus ring. A bunch of camera settings are here. Focus ring response and all that stuff. I don't really use the focus ring. Uh, I just want to leave it on autofocus most of the time. Now if you're doing going for a cinematic look and you have your camera set up, definitely you want to use that to, uh, to your advantage. When it's fully zoomed out, it actually has a pretty wide angle lens. Like if I put my finger in the camera view, it's like it's got a fairly decent, like once it's zoomed out, I got a decent wide angle. You almost want to touch in your zoom just a little bit when you're shooting stuff. All right, with the image stabilization, I had it set to dy uh, standard. Maybe the dynamic mode may work a little bit better for what I'm uh, using it for. Because it wasn't off. It was on. It was on standard, but I'm going to switch it over to dynamic. And we'll see how that works next time I go out and do a video. The standard mode did seem to be just a little bit shaky. Now I'm holding the camera and I'm handheld walking around. So, But I found that this oh, my old camera seemed to look a lot nicer with this image stabilization. So I'm not sure if it needs to be zoomed in a touch though. Maybe that's, that's what I need to do. This speed bump is the speed bump of doom. <laughs> see that? Oh God. All right, so I just want to look at the bit rate and what it looks like when it's the raw footage. So I'm gonna go to the front neck mall, videos into a directory like this, usually by date. To give you an example, I have a 10 minute clip right here. It's just not loading up a thumbnail of it, but uh, this clip here, 13 gigabytes. There, I'm just gonna, and it's like 10 minutes long. This one's actually 11 minutes long, where I'm just walking around the parking lot. So you can see it here in VLC. Um, and I'll just show you the codec information. So the, for those of you that are interested in that H.264 MPEG-4 AVC part 10, and it shoots at 3840 by 2178. And the display resolution is 3840 2160. If that makes sense to you guys, this is with uh 20, uh, 29.970033 frames per second. We call it 30 frames, but uh, but generally they, we call it 30 frames because it's just about 30 frames per second. Uh, the audio is MPEG ACC PA4A. Basically what your raw footage is going to look like when you record your files. And yeah, so you can be looking at about 10 gigabytes or like 
a little bit over 10, 12, 13 gigabytes per 10 minutes of video. So I'm just gonna go to my video project that I had in my video editor. So when I pulled the footage up here in Caden Live, uh, just to show you what it's like, this is my project that I did uh, recently. Here's, here's the whole timeline where I just sort of did a walk around uh, a mall that they're gonna redevelop. So I wanted to just sort of have a, uh, a, a snapshot of what it looked like uh, in history just uh, just to see that. So I'm gonna hit play here on the timeline now. You know, I never mute this thing. There, I just can mute it. Um, so this is uh, my video editing uh, program that I typically use. Now when it plays the this, you can full screen it there. Um, it actually plays it pretty smoothly. Now I am playing my video off of a one terabyte uh, hard to disk drive. Um, I still like hard disk drives, especially when you're dealing with videos like this. You can um, store a lot of 4K video where if you were using a solid state drive, it would be very expensive, but I'm able to do it with this and uh, it works well. Now I have like uh, a graphic coming up here. So here's where there's a graphic and you'll see that the video is playing kind of chompy. Um, and usually this video editor, when you do uh, any kind of title or effects, it will actually kind of preview the, pl uh, the clip in a choppy way anyway, it does that with 720p video. Um, so uh, that's really just uh, part of uh, this video editor, the way I got my settings for that. When it renders it out, it just plays it all smoothly anyway. Uh, so yeah, it's um, easily easy enough with a very standard format to uh, edit in 4K. You can play the video off of a uh, um, traditional uh, hard disk drive, of course, uh, and fit a lot more of that 4K video if you're going to shoot in 4K. Another thing I didn't uh, emphasize either is that uh, this camera will shoot in um, uh, 1080p, 60 frames per second. And I do know that some people prefer that to 4K um, just to give it that uh, the aesthetic that it gives them. So it's really up to you from what you're going to do in videography. Um, I'm just looking to see how big um, the um, image can look like. And a lot of this is mostly for posterity, just uh, and being able to have that uh, uh, 4K footage for historical and uh, archival purposes. So here is the Toys R Us in Kingston, Ontario on 1020 Midland Road. I'll show you the zoom on this camera here. I'll zoom into the Baby's R Us. Zoom right into that R. So I went around a mall and just did a little bit of test footage with uh, with this camera. People might be wondering what the, what, what, what the videos were about me going in the mall. I was just testing this camera out uh, in a mall uh, and in different places just to see how it looks um, and so you guys can see how it looks if you're interested in buying one of these cameras for your video content uh, or if you want to move up. I was almost going to buy a camera a lot more expensive and I'm glad I didn't. I think this camera uh, has everything I need for, for uh, the video work that I'm doing and I don't need to spend an extra thousand dollars for a camera that might have a few extra bells and whistles. Might have like a uh, um, I can plug XLR microphones in that. I don't really think I need that sort of stuff for what I'm doing. So this has been, for, for, for my use, it's been great because what I like about this camera is I can just pull it out of the case and start shooting video without really having to worry about a lot of setups. So the features that Canon has with their cameras, um, especially for a home video camera, if something's happening, you want to get the camera out and shoot some good quality video, not cell phone video, you know, better than cell phone quality video. Uh, and definitely with this lens, you're going to get a lot better picture than with uh, a cell phone that, you know, oh, this my cell phone does 4K? Yeah, great. Good for you and your cell phone. This thing is awesome. Uh, so, um, feels heavy duty. There's no tape in it. It's just like SD cards, right? So this will probably be one of my last uh, 1080p videos I've been shooting on YouTube as I move up to 4K. Well, who cares? <laughs>